Passwords are by far the most common type of user authentication. They are popular because their theory makes perfect sense to individuals and is reasonably simple to implement for developers. On the other hand, poorly constructed passwords can pose security flaws. A well-designed password-based authentication process does not save the user's actual password. This would make it far too simple for a hacker or a malevolent insider to access all of the system's user accounts. In this video, you will learn how to crack passwords and simultaneously try to make your passwords as brute force resistant as possible. Let's take a look at the topics to be covered today. We start by learning about what is password cracking in general. Next. We take a look at the different techniques of password cracking that hackers use in order to generate user credentials for hacking. Moving on, we take a look at the multiple tools that hackers can use to generate these hashes and the passwords. Finally, we take a look at the steps and the guidelines that users can follow to prevent their passwords from being cracked. Let's start by giving a basic idea about password cracking. Password cracking is the process of identifying an unknown password to a computer or a network resource using a program code. It can also assist a threat actor in gaining illegal access to resources. Malicious actors can engage in various criminal activities with the information obtained through password cracking. The procedure might entail comparing a set of words to guess credentials or using an algorithm to guess the password repeatedly. Password cracking can be done for several reasons, but the most malicious reason is in order to gain unauthorized access to a computer without the owner's awareness. This results in cybercrime, such as stealing passwords for the purpose of accessing banking information. Other non-malicious reasons for password cracking occur when someone has misplaced or forgotten a password. Another example of non-malicious password cracking may take place if a system administrator is conducting tests on password strength as a form of security test. This enables so that the hacker cannot easily access protected systems. The best way that users can protect their passwords from cracking is to ensure that they choose strong passwords. Typically, passwords must contain a combination of mixed case random letters, digits, and symbols. Strong passwords should never be actual words. In addition, strong passwords are at least eight characters long. In many password protected applications, users are notified of the strength of the password they've chosen upon entering it. The user can then modify it and strengthen the password based on the indications of its strength. Now that we understand the basics of password cracking, let's go through the basic techniques hackers use to retrieve passwords from general victims. Asking the customer for their password is a simple approach to hacking. A phishing email directs the unwary reader to a counterfeit login page linked with whatever service the hacker wants to access, generally by demanding the user fix some critical security flaw or aid in a database reset. That page then captures their password, which the hacker can subsequently exploit for their own purpose. Social engineering influences the victim to get personal information, such as bank account numbers or passwords. The strategy is popular among hackers because they realize that humans are the gateway to vital credentials and information. Through social engineering, the employee tried and true tactics to exploit and influence age-old human tendencies rather than devising novel means to breach secure and advanced technologies. It has been demonstrated that many firms either lack adequate security or are overly friendly and trustworthy when they should not be. They allow granting access to critical facilities based on a uniform or a sob story. A hacker searches a password dictionary for the correct password in the case of a dictionary attack. Password dictionaries cover many themes and a mixture of topics such as politics, movies, and music groups. User's failure to create a strong password is why this approach efficiently cracks passwords till today. Simply said, this assault employs the same terms that many individuals use as passwords. A hacker can compare the password hash obtained to hashes of the password dictionaries to find the correct plain text password. Now that the passwords have been hashed, the hackers attempt to achieve authentication by breaking the password hash. They accomplish this by employing a rainbow table, which is a set of pre-computed hashes of portable password combinations. Hackers can use the rainbow table to crack the hash, resulting in guessing your password. As a result, it retrieves the password hash from the system and eliminates any need to break it. Furthermore, 
and does not necessitate the discovery of the password itself. The breach is accomplished if the hash matches. In a brute force assault, the attacker attempts multiple password combinations until the correct one is identified. The attacker uses software to automate this process and run exhaustive password combination in a substantially shorter length of time. With the growth of hardware and technology in recent years, such programs have been invigorated. It won't be quick if your password is more than a few characters lengthy, but it will eventually reveal your password. Brute force assaults can be sped up by throwing more processing resources at them. With so many different techniques coming together to crack passwords, none of them are useful without the right tools. There are a plethora of scripts and snippets of code that can retrieve passwords from either encrypted storage or from the hash digest. Let's go through some of these tools. Kane and Able is a password recovery tool for Microsoft operating systems. It allows easy recovery of various kinds of passwords by sniffing the network, cracking encrypted passwords using dictionary, brute force, and crypt analysis attacks. Recording VoIP conversations, decoding scrambled passwords, recovering wireless network keys, etc. are some of the other features of Kn Enable. The latest version is faster and contains a lot of new features like ARP poison routing which enables sniffing on switched LANs and man-in-the-middle attacks. The sniffer in this version can also analyze encrypted protocols such as SSH1 and HTTPS while containing filters to capture credentials from a wide range of authentication mechanisms. It also ships routing protocol authentication monitors and route extractors. Dictionary and brute force crackers are also present along with common hashing algorithms and several specific authentications, password hash calculators, and other features. John the Ripper is a password cracking application that was first released in 1996 for Unix-based computers. It was created to evaluate password strength, brute force encrypted hash passwords and break passwords using dictionary attacks. It can use dictionary attacks, rainbow tables and other attacks depending on the target type. Rainbow Crack is a password cracking application that uses time memory trade-off algorithm to crack password hashes with rainbow tables. Rainbow tables make password cracking more easier and faster than traditional brute force attacks. It is like a dictionary containing nearly every possible password and the pre-calculated hashes. Creating this kind of dictionary takes much more time than cracking a single hash, but after that, you can use the same dictionary over and over again. This procedure might take a long time. However, once the table is ready, it can break passwords far quicker than brute force methods. With so many tools ready to nab our passwords, there are a certain set of rules users can follow to protect their credentials from being compromised. Let's cover some of these guidelines. Longer passwords are required, making the brute force mechanism tougher to implement. Longer passwords and passphrases have been demonstrated to boost security significantly. However, it is still critical to avoid lengthier passwords that have previously been hacked or that feature often in cracking dictionaries. This password policy encourages users to establish passwords that do not contain personal information. As previously said, most users create passwords utilizing personal information such as hobbies, nicknames, pet or family member names, etc. If a hacker has access to personal information about a specific user, for example via social media, they will test password combinations based on that knowledge. Password regulations should compel users to distinguish between security and convenience. Users should be prohibited from using the same password for all services. Password sharing between users, including those who work in the same department or use the same equipment, should be avoided. A single breached password doesn't affect your other accounts with this policy. Some password regulations necessitate the creation of a passphrase rather than a password. While passphrases serve the same objective, the length makes them more difficult to break. In addition to letters, a good pass should include numbers and symbols. Passwords may be easier for users to remember than passphrases. However, the latter is much more breach resistant. Two-factor authentication or 2FA can help secure an online account or even a smartphone. 2FA does this by asking the user to provide two forms of information, a password or a personal identification PIN and a code texted to the user's smartphone or a fingerprint before accessing whatever is secured. This helps discourage unauthorized entries to an account without the original owner's permission.
Hope you learned something new today. If you have any questions about the topic, please feel free to ask us your queries in the comment section below and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Subscribe to our channel for more videos like this and thank you for watching. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.